Hello brothers and sisters and welcome to Ultimate Fishing Simulator 2. Today I'm going to teach you a bunch of little beginner tips that will help you get through your first few levels like 1 through 6 and give you a basic understanding of how the gear works and why your fishing rod is breaking so often. So let's first talk about equipment here. So you're going to have a similar setup to this. You're not going to have this twist on here. It'll be the, the brown one here, but there's really no difference. I haven't seen too much of a difference here. But you're going to start off with the feed master here. This is your first spinning rod. And for the first map in the game, for your first three levels, we're going to be spinning. We're not going to be using floats because there's not a lot of fish there that you can float. You can get like bluegill and something else, but they're not worth a lot of money nor XP. So it's not worthwhile for us. Okay. And then obviously you've got your first reel up to three kilograms. You have, and you have a line that's 0.78 kilograms. Now, what does this stuff mean? So from... The highest to lowest, this is supposed to be like your most expensive stuff. Although the reels are definitely much more expensive in this game than most rods. So how it works is this. And this isn't the, the standard. Even though this says a strength of three and a half kilograms, that should mean that this rod can hold at 100% tension or drag three and a half kilograms of, of weight from the fish or tug. But... I've caught six, seven kilogram fish with this without too much problem. So it's definitely a good basis, but it's not the end all. The real end all is mostly with your lines, right? So with this, you, we can promise that, all right, a three and a half kilogram fish is what I can catch with this effectively without having a chance to break my line. So if I keep everything under that, I have a hundred percent chance not to break. Three kilograms is my reel. So now my reel would tentatively break at three kilograms. I find this to still be wrong. Um, like I said, I've caught seven or eight kilograms worth of fish at once. Nice big carp, but it definitely helps uh, keep a basis. So, and then this is the one that really does matter is your line. Again, it's not set in stone, but this would be like at 100% drag. This line could easily hold 0.78 kilograms. Now... How does this all correlate to why your lines break so often? So we have to figure out how much drag we can use with our reel, with our rod using math. But the first thing you want to do when you start is you want to switch out this line. Okay. This line is garbage and you can buy one at level one. So if we go to the shop here, go to lines and you can see right here, level one line, the UFE mono clear 0.16. It has a 1.3 kilo strength, so it's just about double. So if we go back to our setup here, click on our line, and then we click on ignore the other ones here. But if we click on the one I'm talking about, the mono clear 0.16 for 1.3 kilograms, we can hit use. So now we have a 1.3 kilogram line and a three kilogram reel. That's roughly 40%, right? So if every 10% of drag would be 0.3 kilograms because of the reel here. So every 10%, because it makes it easy math is 0.3 to get to point or to get to 1.3, it's a little more than 40. So if we use 40 as our drag, we will never break the line unless the fish is like three or five pounds, right? Or kilograms. So we'll use this as our basis and that's how you're going to effectively use your drag. And I'm going to show you how to tease that to actually get more effective with it. Because this is, like I said, this is just your ground basis. So let's take this setup here and let's go fishing. So you're obviously, don't mind that I'm level nine here. It's not going to affect anything. I'm using all the same low level items that you would have if you start. I'm just going to set it to morning because I like morning and clear skies. It does affect the fish slightly. I haven't figured out exactly what it is. It would take a lot of data mining to get that going well, but this is it. And I just like this because it just looks nicer. So I'm going to open up the map here with M <clears throat> and I'm going to teleport to the old bridge. I like this spot over here to start off. There's a lot of good fish. You can get some sockeye. You can get some smallmouth. So it's just a really good spot. So if we press one to pull out our rod, you can see our set is right there in the upper right hand corner. And I want to point out a little hard to see, but you see how beneath my lure right there, it says like Robinson classic twist, blah, blah, blah. And then it says slow straight, slow straight means that's the kind of drag we need with our lure to get the most effectiveness out of what we have attached here. 
So look at that little fish right there. Hey, bud, you, you good? So that means if you get yourself in a slow, straight drag, you're going to get the most effectiveness out of your lure, which means that the fish are going to be more likely to attack. So let's throw this out here and show you what that means. I'm going to go to the underwater cam so you can get a good look. Now, you can see in the bottom right-hand corner, I've got my drag at 80. I'm going to just change that to 40 like we talked about. And then I'm just going to bring this up so it's not sitting on the ground. And if we start reeling this in... There we go. Sometimes it doesn't like to reel in right away. A little extra slack on there. So you can see right now I've got it at a slow straight. You can see that the, the bobber or the lure right there that's kind of bobbing it is green. The brighter green it is. Oh, there's a fish. So I'm just going to hold control. I'm going to get out of this. Hold control and then you right click like this to, to set the hook in the fish. And now we can effectively drag it in. So you want to do this at 100% speed. So you can hold control to get that speed and you can see we have no line tension in the bottom right we don't have any rod tension or reel tension because it's just a little guy there we go beautiful little pumpkin seed how adorable we're gonna hit keep i suggest you keep everything in the beginning you are gonna be a money hungry little boys and girls so you're gonna want all the goodies you can get it might sound good. If you release them, you do get 50% more experience. So if you're looking to level up quicker, sure. But right now, what we're looking for is cash as well. So that's what I'll show you. So you can see now we're at a slow straight. If I chink, crank this up to 30, we are now at a straight. And now it's just like, you know, I'm just bringing it all the way in. And if we tease it, now it's at a slow... Oh, Jesus. I was going to say, it doesn't actually completely affect if you catch a fish or not it doesn't have to be perfectly set they'll still attack at any point you're just much more effective if you're within the the restraints of your lure so we got another pumpkin seed here if we get a more pumpkin seed i'm gonna just swap to this side beautiful so you can see it says like a slow lift and drop. Those are just different styles that can be properly utilized with different lures. And you'll see them as you buy them. But here we got the slow straight. So I'm just going to set my speed to a nice... Nope, see like straight's too high. So 14% is good for a slow straight. I could probably even slow it down to 10. And get the most out of it there. I don't want to get caught on the rock. You, this game, it'll kind of like you through some of these items it's still in early access so some things are not solid especially in the water you will get your line caught on the ground or on the or in the land though and there's our first catch got a nice little bullhead here gonna bring it up so you see that that white tension right there that's how much tensions on your line and that just means, so like if I, hold on, let me increase my drag here. He's not fighting me so much anymore, but if, if I had my drag all the way at a hundred percent, we may have had a chance to break our line because he could be pulling too hard. All right. There's our bullhead. Nice little guy right there. I'm going to hit keep. We're going to shoot ourselves back up here. And this is how you're going to get your first couple levels here. You're going to do this until level three, and then you can get to the next area where you're going to learn. Well, not learn. You already learned how to do in the tutorial, but it's where you're going to start utilizing bait fishing. But we'll talk about that in the next video. So if you're loving this and you do want to see that next one, make sure you do hit that subscribe button down below so you can see when that video does come out and be the first to get it. And also, if you're loving this and you found it helpful, make sure you do hit that like button down below. So we're going to keep going here we're gonna see there's another pumpkin seed here it looks like i've got a lot of pumpkin seeds over here today it looks like this one wasn't a the best hit that i usually get and that's okay that's just kind of how fishing games go you're not always going to get the same stuff in the same areas fish kind of rotate in and out so that's just what it is i'll show you my next spot if we open up the map here i also like to come over just on the other side of the bridge to two and you can see like that's exactly where we were just kind of casting through. And then I'm just going to even bring myself just a little further this way and just kind of check out what's over here. So this is what's great about the underwater camera. If you use you 
and you won't see this if you're in the, oops, see, I got caught on the wall here. If you press Q, it'll reset your line. Sometimes you have to like drag it just a little bit. So just left click and then press Q. So this is what's great about the underwater cam too. It's not necessarily so you can see if a fish caught, got your line, but it's so you can see what's around you. So you can decide, do I want to stay here or not? So as I drag through, I can see a little, uh, there's that little bluegill there maybe. I see a duck above me. No, that's not gonna do me too good. And frankly, mostly an empty space here. I can see a little guy right there. That's a pickerel. Looks like a grass pickerel perhaps. Oh, I've got my speed too high. There we go, back to 14. See, and see that guy right up there? He's doing a little dance at the top of the water. That means he's gonna come and attack my line. I don't know what that's all about. It's probably a glitch in the game, but there we go. And it looks like we got a nice little sockeye here. And you, okay, you see how the line tension there is like in the red? He's probably a little big. So I'm gonna turn that drag even further down. The further down it is, the bigger fish you can catch. It's just gonna be a little harder to reel them in. You're gonna have to really work towards this. So make sure you've got your speed to 100% by holding control. And we'll just bring this bad boy in. You see how we don't have that tension? Now, if I bring this up again, See how that tension's getting in the red on the bottom? Getting even further. That means our line's getting ready to break. We don't want that to happen at all. We don't want our line to break. We don't want our reels to break. If you break your line in this game, just like in real life, you lose your lure, which can suck. In the beginning here, they're free or like two bucks, but when you get some like minnows and stuff, uh, you're talking like 120 bucks for a piece, of, for a lure there, and it doesn't feel good to lose that, that's for sure. So what you want to do when you get in a good fight like this is you're going to want to drag up by holding the right click when it gets to the top and then bring it back down. This will try and pull the fish up and that'll create fatigue on the fish so you can pull it in. Now this is where teasing your drag comes in. So you can see here the, the meter is still in the white. It's not all the way up. I can bring that up a bit more. So I can bring this to 40. What you don't want is it to be near the top of that red. The red is a danger zone. It means your line is in danger of breaking, but it only breaks when it's at the top, not when it's at the bottom. So you can tease that by, you know, bringing that up even just a little more. Like I've got that two bars right here and we're dragging them in, getting some, getting some good pull on this one. This is probably, probably around a kilogram and a half to two kilograms. I want to say. Just because we got a basic line set up on this, I'm dropping the drag down a bit because he got a little stronger on us. He, he seems to be a bigger guy. Remember, our line's only good for 1.3 kilos. So because of how I'm setting out a 40% drag, we're probably right around that line, I'm going to say. Now, one thing you can do, uh, the game is cheesy. So like, obviously, like nothing's <laughs> the rod itself is not physical. So if he was near the edge of that water, I could just walk over to the edge of the water and then go pick him up. In this instance, he's not. So that doesn't really work for me. But if I'm just saying, if he was, you could do it. Let's bring this fish in here. It might take a little while to fight this out. It's okay though. That's a, it's a fishing game, right? That's what we want. It means we got a good catch here. Now, if I had a stronger line on here, like you can get at level three, I think. Oh, see, he's getting tired. He's coming up to the water. I'm just going to drag him back a bit. Come on. No, you're tired. Get over here. There we go. Got him. What do we got here? Look at that. Two kilograms. That's a good fish right there. Catching this in the early game. That's some good stuff. We got 28 experience out of that. It was also worth five bucks. So in the next area is when we start getting a lot more richer with our fish, but that's a pretty good fish. So let's hit keep here. Now let's talk about quests and how to sell your fish. Okay. So you can sell your fish in the middle of the game. You go, if you just hit escape and go to your profile and fishing net here and you hit open fishing net, you'll see what we've caught so far from hitting keep. So we've got our pumpkin seeds here. We've got our brown bullhead and then we got our rainbow trout. You can see we have a star rating up to five, that two kilogram trout we picked up. Not even a one star, but that bullhead was one, two stars. And you can get a few things out of this. You can put them in a 3D model so you can see how the fishies look, which is pretty nice if you want to get some pictures. Or you can put them into your aquarium or you can add them as a trophy. I suggest selling all these. You're going to need the money. And that's the best use. And you're going to see here your fishing net has a level. Mine's level three because I've caught some fish. 
which increases the capacity that it can hold, which is nice. So it means you can just kind of, it, it sounds like you can stay out there longer. I don't know if some later maps, at least the first four maps don't do this, but um, you can sell your fish right here. But let's head back to the menu. So I'm just going to hit exit location. So let's go up here to the quests. So in your quests, you're going to see, I don't have any quests right now because I've already done them, but you get daily quests. You'll get weekly quests, which you can spend your quest points on to buy, to open them up so you can get some extra cash. So these give cash. I've gotten like 75 cash of them. I think one of these monthlies gave me like 90 or a hundred bucks as well. So it's pretty good cash. So I definitely suggest doing the dailies. And then as you get quest points, do your weeklies. And then what's left over, then do your monthlies. So, you know, fish of a given species, any fish time spent. It seems like, um, well, like the time spent on fishing grounds is very easy. And it seems like um, everything's done within your level. I haven't had anything be like, go catch the, go catch a marlin, right? None of that's happened. Now, I did notice when you start a new character, um, it doesn't per start your quest right away. It tells me to change, I'm able to change them. So what I did was I hit change on one and then all of them said in progress. So I suggest coming here after you do your first couple of fights. And then come in here and hit change so it'll activate your quest. And then from in the game, you can press F3 to see the quests. Now let's go over to the skills. So we've got two different skill trees here. We've got the Economist and the Dodger. You can see I've gone down the Dodger line so far. To me, that seems the most useful. So like the Economist here, we can see. And you to get to the middle ones, you have to have both of the outside ones. So... Like this, when you reach a new level, the amount of time you earn extra coins is extended by 5%. It's like, okay. Like at the higher levels, you're not really gaining levels fast. And it's like five minutes. So the time extended is, it's it's not going to really be worth it, in my opinion. Not unless like something really happens at the end, but that's just such a last minute kind of thing. And then this one's nice, like increase the sales price of fish from the net and aquarium by 5%. Okay. I can see that. But again, in the early game... Like in the next spot, like some of your best fish that you'll catch is going to be like 40 or 50 bucks. And that's like a top of the line fish for what you're able to handle. So when you're talking a 5% increase on that, you're really only talking about between like one to two bucks, right? And then on your smaller fish, you're talking pennies. So in the early game, that's not that important. I suggest going down the Dodger line here and let's just continue going. So like iron lure, if a fish breaks off, you won't lose your bait or hook. That's pretty nice. That's over here. This one here increased the chance of uh, being able to buy items at better prices. So there might be sales that you exchange daily quest twice. And then it kind of ends when you log in daily. Extra bonuses are credited to the account and lets you repair your damage items for 50% less. So it's pretty good overall. And then you can get a 10% sale bonus. But here, this will help you level up. So the first one here is the attractive competitor. Increases lure effectiveness by 5% and accelerates the time it takes to get a bite. That means fish are going to come much more often. Then you have to come over here to breeder. Fish and aquariums grow 5% faster. I haven't really used this yet. It's probably pretty decent, but you have to get to get the next one anyways, which is the advanced fishing net. Increase the level of the fish net twice as fast, which is pretty good. Again, it's not the greatest, but if, you, if your fishing net is too small and you catch a fish that's too big to fit in it at some point, you're not going to be able to sell it. You'll have to release it. The next one here is the advanced. Oh, sorry. That was um, received 5% more experience for the fish cap caught. This one here is the twice as fast. So that'll be the next one I probably get. Because I'm going to need both of these trees done to get the attractive competitor. But going down the line, I got strongman fish get tired 5% faster, which is pretty good for fighting big fish like we just did a second ago. And then prolongs the preview ability to 10 seconds and reduces its cooldown to two minutes i don't haven't used the eagle sense yet so i'm gonna have to check that out i don't even know if i have it um i've pressed v and nothing's happened that's supposed to be the key for it so more to come i guess and the advanced fish net which we just talked about adds the preview ability which allows you to see all fish oh this is the eagle eye so you got to get over here to get eagle eye and then come over here to get eagle sense a little backwards in my opinion it should kind of be verticality but Whatever. It's a weird skill tree, in my opinion, like how it's set up, but it's fine. It's a fishing game. It's like this isn't the main crutch of the game, right? So it adds the ability, the preview, which allows you to see all the fish swimming in the water. The preview lasts five seconds, has a cooldown of four minutes. And then when you get this, 
you get the preview for 10 seconds and you'll see it for two minutes so that's or and the cooldown will be two pretty good uber effectiveness by 10 and accelerates time to get a bite again really really attractive strong band fish get 10 percent or get tired 10 percent faster and then the last one fishes grow faster so i definitely suggest the dodger line and then start working your way down the economist after you've leveled up enough um it's definitely just more beneficial to your entire fishing experience overall like if you're catching fish faster you're making money faster and really the 10 percent boost is only really nice once you're getting towards like the later game i'd say when you're catching fish like every fish is like 50 plus bucks right and then you're getting an extra five bucks extra five bucks extra 10 bucks so that's all pretty nice and dandy now why don't we go and look just in the last area here like so if you do decide to trophy your fish let's go to the profile and then let's go to the residence so you don't get to choose where your fish go i have to double check and test it a bit more i just haven't really wanted to waste fish by putting them in here right away but you can see here i, I threw one on the wall just to see the smallmouth bass now i don't know if this is the smallmouth bass dedicated spot i'd have to catch another one and see if i can put it somewhere or if it just replaces this but my thought is that every fish has its place and it's only going to go there so you don't get to decide at all where fish would go i hope they kind of change that because you know people are going to want like specific fish in specific areas and it might not be how the game developers want you to put them like these are probably some of the more highly trophied fish right like right in the middle here but maybe people want to make this like a really nice aquarium for, you know, like all their bass goes here and they want to put like some top bass over here to quantify like how great they are. And then they have some growing in here. Speaking of growing, we can see here, like, I guess my, my fish is very hungry. I can feed him. I don't know like how much food he needs, but you can see like he ate one, one worm and he's going. So I don't know if I have to like keep doing it but there's a ton in here now let's well come back to him you can see he's now worth seven bucks 23 he's gained some weight since i got him he's a pretty big boy you can see he's gained 0.05 kilos since i've acquired the man so you can sit here and put fish in here they have a lifetime so that way you can put them on display they will die eventually hence lifetime and also you can grow them so you can sell them for even fatter cash so it's it's not a bad system and it's a nice way to put fish in i do kind of wish that you can either turn off growth so that they don't die and then maybe you can never sell them again afterwards or something because people might want to permanently have some specific fish in for aesthetic qualities and not have to always go back out and just get new ones regardless of size right but all right brothers and sisters this has been your beginner tips i hope you found this helpful this will help you get to level three quite easily stay tuned and hit subscribe because i'll help you get to level six and teach you a little bit about bait casting over at the next zone. So as usual, this has been Shabby Doing. I hope the rest of your day is not too shabby.